I finally got my motherboard back from Gigabyte. This has definitely been quite the extended project at this point. Uh, I was not expecting the delays or the challenges or basically anything that's gone wrong with this uh, project so far has gone wrong. I'm hoping that from this point on, things will be nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and dive in and see if we can get this thing finished up. So the entire reason I sent this motherboard in uh, to Gigabyte, and I'm gonna zoom in on it here, is this pin, somehow when I was unscrewing the um, top connect, or the top piece here to get this off so I can get back to the uh, M.2, um, just completely detached itself from the motherboard. Yes, I could have gone ahead and probably epoxied it myself, not that that's something I really would want to do, but I could. But being the price of this motherboard, I felt like Gigabyte should fix it, uh, which they did. And part of why I did it this way is I wanted to see what their customer service was like. You know, what's the experience for the end user in this situation, myself, a paying customer? Um, it was okay. Uh, you can't really speak to people easily. You end up, the first time I called, I was on hold for, God, I don't know two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. And I just finally hung up. They want to do everything online, which we did. It just, it took basically a little over a month from the time I sent it, about five weeks, I think, from the time I sent it to the time I actually got the motherboard back. In fact, there's one point it said it was finished and it didn't ship for two weeks after it was finished. And I had sent multiple emails asking if and when they were going to send my motherboard and why they hadn't at that point. Well, they eventually got out and then uh, they put it in shipping that was 10 days. <laughs> so this has really been an interesting one. Regardless, I am glad to have this thing back. And I am going to point out the first change I did is one, I did go away from the Optimus, um, the Optimus uh, CPU block. And I ended up going to this Velocity one and said, I'm excited with how it looks. Let's dig in and get this whole mess done. Here we go. Okay, got the motherboard in, and you can see why I chose this block, I think, uh, along with the RAM. One, the RAM was gonna give it a little nice touch of bling, if you will. And then it'll just tie in very nicely with the rest of the system. So I have a little bit of bling in here. It'll be perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna start putting together the <laughs> um, rest of this build. And what I mean by this is another little interesting tidbit. Um, I wanted to use the vertical uh, riser cable and show off the card. Fill some space, you know, this is kind of, a, you know, a fairly good sized case, but if I could fill up here and fill up over here with the reservoirs, it would look really nice and clean. However, <laughs> Inwin has these two screws offset. One is further up, one's further back. I checked their website and they are actually sold out of their PCIe riser kits. And apparently that kit is proprietary to this uh, in the sense of this. The bottom of the riser cable, which I have one around here somewhere, the riser cable itself has these two holes uh, on either side typically. Uh, some are a little different than others, obviously. Well, theirs, so this is what I was going to use. I actually have a PCIe Gen 4 version of this also um, from uh, Link Up. I think it's some really good cables. So this one has one slot here, one slot here for a hole, or for the for the screw. 
pretty simple. You know, if these were mounted in the same spot, it would be simple. However, theirs has three holes, and this is meant to be mounted with one hole in the front, one hole in the back. I have no idea why they designed it that way, but they did. And it's shame on me for not catching it sooner. I mean, I should have looked ahead and said, oh, this is going to be a problem. I'm gonna to have to get that and, and make my plans around that. However, I, again, shame on me, assuming that a case would use some common sense so, the, so that a person could go ahead and, you know, do this however they deem fit. And yeah, that's not the case, oh, pun intended, apparently. So I am going to have to figure out what I want to do. I have a feeling I'm going to have to mount the GPU vertically, and if, or I'm sorry, horizontally, if I can't solve something here. Uh, and if that's the case, I'm going to switch over to a different water block because I don't like how the uh, cables are strewn all about in the uh, EK block. It's just, it's just I, I personally think that that's a fail, but that's my opinion. I don't want to, I, mean, I know I'm coming across as super negative, but I'm frustrated uh, <laughs> because nothing's going right with this dang build, but I'm going to get it put together. So in the meantime, we're gonna do something that should be simple. We're gonna put the radiators in and the power supply and the rest of the stuff that we would need up to maybe including the GPU. And then all that will be left will be the cooling system, which I still haven't fully planned that routing yet, but we will get that uh, put in. Uh, in the meantime, I am using the uh, Corsair Hydro X uh, water series for my uh, radiators uh, because the ones I wanted were unavailable from Hardware Labs. And these are actually made in conjunction with, or in collaboration, conjunction, I'm not really sure which way you put it, with um, Hardware Labs. So these should be pretty simple. So putting these in should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of an interesting mounting the unit they have. They have these two brackets of the one for the front, right here, and this one for the top. And you mount your, Fans in there, along with your radiator. So I'm putting a radiator here. I'm gonna put my, most likely my fans up on top, I believe. They won't fit, then I'll put them on the bottom and have them in a pole format. Um, I'll kind of go from there. Actually, I'll probably put them so the exhaust up there. Ah, we'll figure, we'll figure that out. Right, let's go ahead and get these put together. I like, the hardware lab stuff. Um, I just feel like they have very good quality. They're consistent. I don't have issues with um, fluids having like compatibility issues with them. And what I mean by that is uh, some of the, you read things about uh, people using pastels and or uh, water with just a dye, or even just water with a, a biocide in it, and having issues, uh, gunk buildup. Uh, you know, a lot of people will have to uh, flush their system all the time to get the junk out. Now, I always go through and, and flush my stuff, which I will do before I actually fill this full of uh, the final fluids. But I find that the stuff that comes from hardware labs and hopefully the situation here with these Corsair uh, Hydrox series, I'm hoping that they, um, or yeah, as long as they're consistent, that I shouldn't have an issue with um, a lot of leftovers in the inside. They just, they come clean, they come ready to go. And I really like that. Now, what I'm using for my fans, if anybody remembers, are these um, Crown. AC-120s for this build. And I'm doing that because of the ability to daisy chain the fan. And I am really excited about that because I will be able to not have wires all strewn about. And you just literally, 
and link them up. Use a simple cable, go from one fan to the next. And it supplies the power uh, for both the fan and lighting. And that is as simple as it gets, and I wish more companies did this. I would typically go with um, Noctua fans. I love them, they really high quality fans. But I want to minimize the amount of wiring in this case. Part of the reason I went with M.2s and not SSDs everywhere. There will be no external drives in this thing or no non-board mounted drives. I'll put it that way. Everything's going to be the uh, M.2s uh, so that I can eliminate wires and just have it clean. The only wires, if you will, are going to be from the PC or the PSU um, as well as if you want to call the uh, water cooling system uh, a tube or lines, I guess, or wires or whatever, however you want. I don't know. I'm having issues today. Regardless, this is what I'm doing with them. How's that sound? I think it sounds great to me. <clears throat> okay, so here's how the first portion looks. And it's really nice and clean. What I like about this is that's my wires. So when I put this in, obviously it's gonna dip here. Let's do this as an, oops. <laughs> do this as an example here. Okay. That's what you see. There's no wires running everywhere. So I gotta put one more back here. Whoa. It's a lip that's gotta sit on. <laughs> it's a lot more sturdy once these are screwed on. Okay, so as you see, when it's put in, this is what it looks like. So you don't see any wires running everywhere. All I have to do is I have to put one more back here and connect it to my fan over here. So I don't know if the shorter wire will work for the link. So I'll probably have to use one of the longer ones and, and um, you know, tie it down. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm hoping I can use one of the shorter ones between because that would be optimal. We'll see the distance, what it looks like. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get the other one taken care of here. We'll put it in here and see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like with the top radiator and the front radiator. Um, still gotta figure out how I'm gonna plan it. My thought is reservoir, GPU, GPU to CPU, CPU out up to radiator, radiator across into radiator, and then out back into the uh, reservoir. Now to get this in, this front panel has to come off. Just three screws, pretty simple. Oops, and good if I put them on there correctly, right? Three screws, one, two, three, and that's what um, needs to be removed in order to get the um, radiators put on. Then we tighten these back up here, which I'm going to, with these screws. All right. Nuts or whatever in the world you want to call them, so that I don't have any falling radiators. Because that would be bad. Pretty easy to work on that portion. I will say uh, one thing I really like that uh, Corsair does with their radiators, or at least they did with this one, is they include enough screws. Hardware Labs, I found um, one of the more frustrating things is that if you, let's say you've got a, um, you know, three, a triple radiator. They give you enough screws to mount three fans. Apparently, they don't take into consideration or they don't think that you should have push-pull. Whereas uh, Corsair gives you enough screws right off the bat to do push-pull. 
I'm gonna figure that one out. Uh, so anyway, I do like that. I'm gonna get these screwed back in here so that we're all set to go here. You know what, I forgot a screw. Oh well. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and take this off so you can see what it looks like. I hate having leftover screws. Just so you can see how simple this is then too. Can't believe I missed a screw. Ay, 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 ay. All the more reason to make sure that whenever you're doing this stuff, that you're checking things first. All right. <laughs> I forgot the top screw on the radiator. I still haven't totally decided that I'm gonna leave the, the fans on the inside of the case, or on the bottom, I should say, in a pull format. Um, I like how it looks, and there's not much clearance up here for it to really grab air, but we'll see what I end up doing here. The only reason I might switch it is because it might give me more, give me more room to work with, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll decide that when we get to there. That won't be today. I'd like it to be. I just took the time. I'm already running out of time. I want to get the power supply in. See with this front off, how easy it is to put this on here. Now, I say easy, that's relative because this top one here is a little wobbly because of how it sits there until that's on. All right, now let's do this. There you go. So those are nice. Like I really like how this fills some of this area here, and plus that those RGB fans. Even though I'm not like, oh my gosh, you have to have RGB everything. I'm not really sure what I want to do here yet. We'll see. So this goes right back to here. All right, and that's what that looks like. Now, I still need to figure out, and then I'm going to go ahead and go with the. Um, Protium normal res. I was gonna go with the re the resonance as it's called, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use their standard res, put that right there. I gotta figure out with this. This is really bugging me with the um, vertical mount thing. I have an email off to um, Inwin to try to figure that out, but they have a unique system to them and that just ugh, bugs me. Anyway, we'll see what I end up with here. My gut tells me I'm going to end up just looking at this. I'm going to end up probably putting these up on top. We'll see. Let's get that power supply in there. That should look pretty good. So obviously, we're in day two. I had to stop and um, I had to get my daughter to soccer and just a crazy mess. And mic problems, a bunch of other stuff going on. However, to get us to a, uh, a point here of, of where we can at least kind of get this video wrapped up. First off, you'll notice I got most of this stuff laid out. I do need to figure out exactly what I'm going to do for my reservoir. Um, I don't have a lot of space here. So I have a couple options. <laughs> Maybe do a horizontal, which is not what I wanted to do because I did want to do this as a vertical mount. But as you can see, I don't have the vertical riser kit. It doesn't come with one with this $500 case because for whatever reason, InWin doesn't include it. They should, uh, but regardless, they don't. Uh, so I went ahead and mounted this horizontally. Not perfect, so I'm, I might put my um, reservoir right there. I haven't totally figured that out yet. Now, that's okay, we'll get this laid out. I could also go to a thinner radiator. Not that I really want to, but then I'm gonna be running into really tight space right here. I should be fine for, radi uh, for a um, reservoir, but uh, we'll see. I haven't decided what I want to do there yet. Also, I ended up sticking with the EK block just because it matched really nicely with this, uh, the CPU block, which I really, I do like the look of this. The only real bling I'm gonna have on this is going to be the G-Skill uh, Trident Royal uh, memory, or the RAM. The other thing I did finally get in is I got in my uh, custom cables from cable mod 
I'm really excited to use these. As you can see, they're a real nice dark color I went with their black aluminum uh, ties to make this look really nice and clean. I really wanted to go with a dark look on this. So I'm gonna get those installed. And what that will leave left really is my uh, water cooling setup. So the, the radiator, I'm sorry, the reservoir, pump, and tubing. Um, I'm excited and that's what we're gonna end up doing next week. Uh, I don't like keep doing these multi-partners, partners, but this has been a really strange and trying build at times, but I'm gonna keep going because I'm gonna get this thing done. I'm excited to get it done. Side note, <laughs> this motherboard did come back. Uh, they didn't really fix that. It came undone again. I'm just saying, forget it. I'm gonna leave it at the time being and kind of go from there, but I'm not very impressed with gigabytes. Customer service or really lack thereof at this point. But let's go ahead and let's get these installed. One thing I wanted to point out is they have a very interesting uh, mounting mechanism for their uh, power supplies. What you do here is this top screw just gets screwed down a little bit and that releases some tension and you have this and this, all it is is a tension bracket that you can then slide the power supply out from. I like that. I think that's interesting. Uh, it's a nice quick way of getting to that. Uh, I can, the other thing I really like is with the ability for me to take off this front piece here, I can access the power supply from both sides. So I think that's pretty darn cool. Anyway, let's uh, get the rest of our wires here connected, or I should say, yeah, uh, uh, custom cables. And let's see how this thing turns out for the day. Okay, I got the cables in, as you can see, looks really nice and clean. I like that black cable look. Wires are very minimalistic. The only thing that I screwed up on, I'm look, I have to check my order, but if you see right up here, um, from my CPU, is the one was done right, the other one didn't get a uh, any cable combs. So I'll have to reach out to Cable Mod with that one and figure out what in the world happened. But other than that, I think so far, it looks pretty good. So you gotta figure out how I'm going to uh, put the reservoir in there. So here's what it looks like so far. And here's my thoughts on the reservoir. I don't really know um, if this is what I'm gonna do or not, but my thoughts are somehow getting it in here So it looks something like this, um, if possible. The mounting me mechanisms they need to be able to mount it onto the fans of the radiator would put it so tight that it's actually would be impossible to mount uh, unless I was able to push it back and that, that won't work either. So right now I am leaning towards Doing it just like that. And it pretty much fills up a lot of the space, which is nice. I'll be able to run a few more of the cables behind it. Not that there's really any cables. Again, that's a big reason for doing this. And then uh, we're going to come around back here, which I'll turn it around. And as for cable management, not a lot. I mean, this is this is going to be simple. I just got to you know clean up these, my uh, case wires, the um, 
last wire that comes off of the in-win AC120s, which is nice because there's nine of them. So they're all daisy chained, right? And then just the one. So it gets plugged in. I'm trying to decide if I want to use this and run it to the USB. That's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. Um, this comes with the AORS X570 Extreme. It's their Commander Pro. It's a nice idea. I like this. It is magnetic, but it's they're not good magnetics or good uh, magnets. So suggestion to Gigabyte, put some real magnets on here. This, these just don't really hold well. So if I do it, I'm gonna probably have to put some 3M tape on there and just stick it on, So, uh, which is fine. It'll be nice and clean if I do so. All right, plus this will light up nice and pretty. Should have decided to do that on the, the uh, back panel on here. So definitely with the minimalistic uh, amount of wires, um, this should look really nice, especially with two sides of glass. So anyway, this is what the case, this is what the case is starting to look like. So it's gonna be a nice clean build. I'm excited to get this finished up. Just uh, have to finish, figure out my planning of my loop and uh, pretty much be done, which would be awesome. So there'll be one more part left of this video. Hopefully you did like this one. Uh, if you did, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, you know what else I'll do. I hope it's not that. Hit that subscribe button for me, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks. So, another level, another level, another level. We ain't never settle now. Level up. Watch me level up. Watch me level up. Watch me level up.